Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Jazz Transcription Clinic. In my last episode, I was talking about the story of this incredible tenor saxophone solo that changed the course of jazz history, or at least changed the life of the Duke Ellington Orchestra. So pop up into uh, my podcast series and or my latest videos on YouTube and you will hear the story that I tell about this incredible solo 27 choruses on a D-flat blues over the piece by Duke Ellington called Diminuendo and Crescendo in Blue. Uh, today I'm going to transcribe one of those solos, not the one that he played in Newport because you can find that transcription everywhere on the web and I want to offer you something a little bit more exclusive for you so let's dive in and into this performance I couldn't find the uh, recording year of this performance but I believe it is something in the early 60s so a few years later than the actual original performance at the Newport Jazz Festival and but this is a long solo I have already transcribed the first three choruses of it uh, or even four choruses uh, and I will continue from there and look at that the solo is about 240 bars, so it's, it's very long, uh, but also, you know, very good and enjoyable. So let's have a listen to the first uh, few bars of the uh, actual uh, solo, which starts here. <laughs> So it's incredibly you know, inflamed and infuriated uh, solo. Let me just uh, enable the scrolling, only scroll when necessary. Uh, remember guys, this platform is called Sounds Lies and I think it's terrific for us transcribers. <laughs> So now we are going to transcribe this. Let me just explain uh, a little bit of the initial part of this long solo. So he starts with a very narrow interval. So the first, almost the first, the entire first two choruses, starting here and ending here, are based on a very short interval. So the first chorus is all about the interval of a diminished fifth. So the lowest note he uses is C and the highest note is G flat. So this is a D flat concert blues, which meaning that Paul Gonsalves is playing in his E flat uh, blues. So he starts with those notes, uh, G flat, E flat, and F. And G flat is a fantastic note. Not only is the blue note in E flat, is the flat three, but it is it's also the flat seven of A flat uh, dominant chord, which happens in bar five and six of the blues. So that's a, an incredible note. Now, Paul Gonzalez's solo, especially on this piece, have been also criticized as being too banal and repetitive. I don't think so. Repetition is good, especially on a blues, especially at that tempo. And you can, you know, grow and build up the tension and the energy by repeating ideas. And by doing so, Paul Gonzalez is using one entire chorus to build up and is using rhythm permutation and rhythm 
ideas to use the same concept and reiterating. Listen to the first chorus. Right? And of course, there are all the notes that you need to play over a blues, right? And the second chorus is an evolution of that concept, a little bit more articulated, and he starts going a little bit bigger with the interval. He reaches a low B flat here, and only before the end of the second chorus, a nice A, which is the sharp 11 on E flat dominant. Right, so let's listen to the second chorus. Right, so everything here is pretty much based on the blue scale or on a mode that is called Lydian dominant. It's one of my favorites, uh, which is a mixolydian scale with sharp 11 or sharp 4, if you prefer. So the A natural is that note. And as you can see, there is the D flat, there is the B flat, the F, so all the notes that really makes a difference. And then we go to bar five and six, and the chord is A flat seven, and Paul Gonzalez plays a straight arpeggio of A flat dominant. You see this, this lick here? Right? Perfect. And here is funny that he changes the A flat into A natural when we go back to E flat. Right? This is a great note. This A flat, I, I love it so much. Uh, right, and then the, the fourth chorus that I transcribed is based on the blue scale. Right, so let's keep going with the transcription. I am going to slow down the tempo and on the sound slice is very easy. I would go down to 80% just to try to be more accurate with the rhythms and the notes. Right? So that would be the rest of a quaver. And then we have G flat. That's a crotchet. And then G flat. Da, da, da. Is that a D flat? Da. Yeah, it is. Da, da. And it plays a little scoop there. Uh, I mean, a little fall. This plays again the same idea. Uh, oh, uh, this is a quaver, and I think this is a B flat, right? Uh, I don't know the rhythm there. Let me listen. Now, these are. This is staccato. And of course, I will add all those details, but this is just a memo that I take because this is so evident. But once I finalize the transcription, I will add all um, the dynamics and also articulations to it for you. You know, to gain more value. 
Da -da. So this is staccato. Da -da. This is almost marcata. Da -da -da -da. And this is an accent, right? Da. Now, <clears throat> I believe that this is a B flat, but he's playing so flat because it's a blues and the blue note is a diminished fifth but it's not really a diminished fifth it's a note that is in between the B flat and the A natural so I can put A natural here but I think even if you look at his hands I think he's playing B flat or maybe not maybe he's playing a natural yeah i can't see his right hand hitting the b flat but maybe you know the video is just okay let's write a natural Maybe it's an A, and I'll put a cross on top of it just to remember that we need to write something on top there. So uh, this will be G flat. And this is A flat. Right? Now, I don't know whether this is a crotchet rest. We will discover it soon. Yeah. So I think this first So that would be a crotchet rest, a triplet, quaver, right? So uh, quaver. Can I just, yeah. G flat. And maybe so that will be it's a crotchet and this is another triplet which is a natural I flat and this is G flat is it a natural or B flat? I think this is the question that we need to ask ourselves. Whenever you play that blue note and it's a perfect blue note that sits in between A natural and B flat. I'm never sure what it is, but this is also the power of saxophone, very similar to the voice, where you can actually play a blue note for what it is. Whoa. So we have the same idea with a different ending. What we can do on Sound Slice is just copy and paste and I believe this is just a quaver which is that and a triplet <coughs> sorry uh, uh, D, D flat. I think it was something like that. Yeah. Uh, let's save it. I'm not sure about the rhythm. Yeah. I will leave it like that. Uh, 
and then he plays Quavis do, do, G flat. Um, I think he plays something like that. Oh, I love those those lines. That is typical for Gonzalez, you know, playing on all the angular and dissonant notes on a very simple chord and very simple harmony. I love it. I think it repeats the A. That's pretty easy, right? So, would you like to tell me the next notes? Where da is the tonic? Five, four, three, two, one. So we already encountered this other um, uh, Gonsalvelish thing, which was here. Uh, right? Can you hear that? That's a pretty much the same phrase that he plays here. So I'm going to paste, to copy and paste. The same idea. Uh, no, I have to select like this. Copy and paste here. Uh, let's see whether it works. Yeah, I think it, it does. It does, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. This is the end of the chorus. And here starts a new chorus. So this is in fact the first real long phrase that Paul Gonsalves is playing on this, right? Is because before that he was playing a sort of riffs and short ideas, short motives that to develop. This is the first long line in Quavers that he plays. And he uses a scale which is a mixture of the uh, blue scale do, 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 and the diminished scale, right? With uh, E natural, E flat, D flat, C. Do, do and B and I. So the E flat half whole diminished scale in this bar in particular, right? With the E natural and that gives that angular sound. So he's playing da, do, da, G. Da, da, bo, da, 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 da. Is it that I for a natural and possibly a sharp? 
with something like this. Yeah. B4. And I think it goes to B natural. That's pretty much what he plays. So you see what I'm doing. I'm just trying to memorize the sound that I hear and then try to sing it back with the right rhythm. And then I'll try to visualize the rhythm. So quave, 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 semi quave, semi quave, quave, quave. Right? And the intervals should be pretty easy. It's all within the scale of E flat and it's G, A flat, C, B flat, A flat, G, A flat. This is what I'm hearing. I might be wrong, of course. And then semi quaver. Quaver. This is what I'm hearing. Again, we are in the blues world. Why not F sharp? Because I prefer G flat because it gives me the idea that that's the blue note, the flat three, over a major E flat chord, right? So if I write F sharp, it's like the augmented second of um, E flat and I don't like that concept. It, it doesn't fit my brain <laughs> over an E flat blues. There's a little fall there that we can put. bending all those notes and those, all those notes uh, I mean are they out of tune yes for the theory they are out of tune but in a blues context they sound so gorgeous I think we can write Oh. 
slower I'm not right with the rhythm be that in a blues this is an enclosure around uh, B flat isn't it so B natural A natural and B flat Do you think there is a triplet? Could it be something like that? Yeah, I like this idea. I put the B flat in brackets because We could also write a quaver and two semi-quavers. Let's do that. Oh, why, why the natural? I don't want the natural. This is D flat. So this is D. And this is a triplet.
That's interesting. Is that a B natural? So he starts. Rhythm is not so this must be this is hard Let's go down to 60% if it helps. Maybe this is a. Maybe it's this. the notes He plays here um, a triplet. Okay, triplet. Gliss that he plays, especially between the notes F and G or F sharp and G, uh, that are really difficult to catch, right? I mean, I guess we can we can write a sort of this thing. Something easy. Da, 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 da. Right. Uh, all right. I'm just wanting to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 
12. So we started another chorus and I didn't realize it. Uh, double bar. And this is one, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's get to the end of this chorus and then we stop and we will finish in another episode. <laughs> Uh, all right, all right, all right. Um, I just wanted to check from here. Okay, so do do do. I can write this bar. Do, 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 do. And now we have to fill this bar. Okay, let's go sixty percent. So I'm tempted to write Shall we go forty percent speed? So I can hear and then it might be six tuplets uh, I'm just trying let's see six in the space of four I can hear G and I can hear F before the E flat yeah, I think it could be accurate. Let's go back to 60% and have a better. I would write da, da, da. I would write this da, 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 da. Da, da, da.
Yeah. But I need to separate this. Ah. Uh, how can I separate this in some slice? Let me check. What like this? Uh, maybe this. Right. Da -da. Right. I just want to write something different. Uh, right now it's more readable and maybe we can even detach this one. Oh, now i like it That's a uh, crotchet. Quavis. Perfect fifth turn. Is that the end? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Right. So I put a double bar there. I save it. And that would be uh, the end of the transcription for today. It's just let's listen to what we have done uh, today we started here and let's put it at full speed <laughs> Da, 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 da. right what a no choice okay so thanks for watching guys remember to like and subscribe to the youtube channel or follow the podcast in any case there is uh, a whole lot of great content and it means a lot when i receive comments even if they are criticism i like them i like to discuss around the solos and uh, remember to follow the channel and please like and subscribe to this channel and see you next time.